welcome back to the channel. We are here. And uh, we might have got 50 miles after putting the ABS module on and good old VTEC strikes. Oops, sorry about that. Solenoid. So I hope it's just a screen, which 99% of them generally are. And, uh, and I'm sure there's a thousand videos on this, but I'm gonna make one too. And it's just gonna be a short one because it's not that difficult to get to. It's my wife. And we don't like cold. We don't do cold. <laughs> what y'all wonder, I'll pause it. On this particular model, the VTEC is of course. Thank you, Vanna. Right in there. Where the, right there. It's not hard to get to. If you see me work on my smart, that this isn't a job. But of course I gotta take off the usual stuff that I took off to do the master cylinder and the ABS. So uh, that's pretty much got a zipper on it. So let's go ahead and get that stuff yanked off. Okay, let's just get this out of the way and then hopefully I can move y'all in here and my arms and face and stuff's not gonna be in the way of getting in there because it'd be really easy, you know, yanking the intake be all over, but I ain't doing that. Thank God for a mechanic husband. That's all I got to say about that. Oh. Did I mention I was getting too over this? Well, I got pliers when you got fingers. Right, right. Mm. Yeah. Come on now. There we go. Parts tray. Bought me some T-handles off Emu. Oh, he forgot to mention it happened on the way to church. Yeah. Four or five times. Stopped, tried to get my bearings on what was going on with it. And I was more worried about getting to church and getting there safely. Sorry it goes away as soon as you got the RPMs up. It go into limp mode. BSA will come on, check engine light immediately. She was mad. And you got around, I haven't had time to even detail the engine compartment yet. I got two cans of engine degrees in there. Cans of cleaner. I just, I even, we haven't had it, we haven't used it long enough to, to uh, enjoy the spoils of the minivan. We're too busy working on it. This is this has this this been we've had it what two weeks two about two weeks we've not put two hundred miles on it no and uh, it's it's we're thankful we're very very thankful it's a wonderful beautiful ride but I guess due to being dealership kept again uh, sorry it gets somewhat aggravating when you uh. All you want to do is use something and you can't and it's your family ride and this has to be a stat job because you got to get your family places and so here we're about to get snow and ice and uh this has got some really good snow tires on it and we'd like to use it you know i got them homemade slicks on the back of my thumper works great in the dry weather and turns she gets a little loose, but keep on pouring money into this. Can't get tires from my car yet. That's not a complaint. Still very thankful, but sometimes you just gotta say it is what it is. And we're grateful for a pretty day today that we can do this. Yeah, pretty before cold. Before it gets <clears throat> bad, because it is cold out here, but it can be worse. I didn't want to deal with the coolant. We really didn't want to do the cooling on this yet. Cooling's good. Well, I say that. Your water pump will go out here next week. No. Uh -uh. Uh, don't jinx it. And apparently, y'all don't like uh, VTEC engines, uh, especially time of bells and water pumps, because there's probably a million videos. Because like 11 people's watched that video, and I really thought that would be a good one for people uh, would want to see that. But apparently, all everybody's worked on those already. 
but I enjoy working on these. These are really, really good vehicles. And what do I need? The usual. Glasses and light. All my neighbors are probably wondering, well, I'm the only one on the road, still got some Christmas lights up. <laughs> I ain't had time to get him down. That was supposed to happen the day after church. God had other plans. Yeah. The device is here, and we got to get this. Looks like a vacuum muffler. We got to get it out of the way. Uh, we got to get this in there. Let me get the. Try to get the hoses off first. So it'll just be out of the way instead of dangling in the way. So we're picking up the rat poop I'm not. with my pliers. I gotta soak with alcohol. So I'm gonna get rat manila. There we go. So it's just a little vacuum muffler. That's right, that's what I'm calling it, since I don't really know, but I kinda know what things do. All right, it's just right here. So we're going to disconnect. Disconnect the VTEC solenoid. There we go. And then the oil pressure modulator, I believe that's what that's going to be. And somebody's already had it off because they broke the connector. Which, it looks newer than the rest, like it is a replacement unit. Uh, but I got a, a known good working one, if it is the same style, which it should be, on my wife's uh, other Honda to get us by until we can get it. So, two more bolts. I think two or three more bolts, and that thing should be right off. So, paraffin base oil. No, I'm not a fan of paraffin base oil. It's good if you use it once, race with it, it's wonderful, but you better change it. Run behind it with detergent oil to clean the engine, then use it again. That's just my personal opinion. I believe it's just three bolts. Could be four. Uh, I say three bolts. One right there, one right there, and one in there. Hopefully, I can see it. Right there. Might be a no. I don't think it's another. Step bit of minutes to hit one of these off. The uh, solenoid. Doesn't look to be that old. That could be wrong. I gotta get it out and you know put the old uh, spectacles on it. Alright, the rag or three. What are you doing? It was just pining for you. <laughs> she married me for my humor. Or like a alright. It is off. And It does look a little trashy. What we were doing all out of your sight was over the pan that I put out there. It wasn't much debris in the screen itself, but there was debris just coming out of this side of the valve assembly. And she said she saw a big chunk fall out, which I saw other chunks fall out too, but nothing that she she said it bounced. So, yeah, it but watch out, it. I have to go over exactly what I've done. Not off camera, but camera to wrong focus. Is I pulled the solenoid out itself, and I flushed that with carburetor cleaner. And I really don't want to move that pentel. But something, it, I'm gonna have to. Now, 
we're going to energize this side. We are not that side for a reason. We're just going to do this. This one here. See if it works. I'm sure it does. It's just uh, so much trash in there. Hear it? You hear it over that forward? No, that's the Cummins. So it's working. It works, as in the solenoid itself does work. All right. So when they say VTEC solenoid, they're talking. I'm not mistaken about this so uh, not this part but this is the valve block and uh, I got the inside cleaned I don't know if I could put it on I'm not too concerned about the outside I just didn't have enough carburetor cleaner to finish that but we flushed it out really really good as you can see the movement oh, my bad wrong way be gentle when you do this don't try to hit the flat side because that's the ceiling just push it down spring should re fully return it i believe it was sticking to all the gargantuous amount of trash that was in it so yeah we need to do we need to change the oil for, uh, we need to change the oil of course i already knew it. that was on the list and i wanted to do the transmission um i mentioned that during the video uh, right there all this work and i'm right there at the canister uh, do that and then in about 500 miles i want to change it again Mm -hmm. So, and that's what, five trips to town? Mm -hmm. Something like that. <laughs> All right, so. So, basically, we think it was trash. Um, we'll have to put it Look back poop. on. <laughs> we'll have to put it back on and then Just try drive. To drive it and see what happens. And then go from there because we don't know. What I'm looking at. Is where it attaches to the cylinder head right here and make sure there's no weirdness going on and right above it is a uh, trash I'm going to clean that off ever so gently so we don't get it down in the yeah well no 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 it's above where it was made. okay so when you pop it off trash can go down yeah, I know so watch the video I'm putting that in two weeks and I go <laughs> trashy kind of sassy was that a bunny song that was Brooks and Dunn wasn't it trashy kind of sassy it's in the lyrics And I like old Derek from Basket Garage. One thing I do like about it is this out of nowhere, he'll just say, you know, I wonder what Tanya Tucker's doing. You know, and that makes you do wonder. After all these years, you know, what are they doing? Are they still making music? I, I'm not trying to steal his flair. He, I can't say it like he does. He's way more humorous than me. <laughs> way more. My wife will tell you that. So. I don't have humor. I wasn't issued one by the U.S. Navy. Notice I don't move when the pot's over. Do you know what? Because hopefully it'll land close to you. I don't know. The, the odds of you not injuring yourself or others gotcha. is greatly reduced. Because if you do that, well, that's <laughs> don't. And then you <laughs> sling and stuff dead. everywhere. You don't poke your neighbor with uh, your screwdriver you're desperately trying to grab. I drop stuff all the time. They, they used to see me. I'm going to get my magnet. All right, it's back together, so we're gonna test drive it. And I'm gonna clear the code. I got a cheap code scanner, the one you probably saw me use on Thumper when I did the thermostat, making sure the coolant fan was coming on properly and the temperature is going up properly. I'm not used to that. I used to freeze my butt off. Time to pray. Well, we fast forwarded about three or four days later. So uh, I did the right thing and I just bought a whole new one. Uh, Cause, um, so give me a minute and uh, 
I'll see if I can break this hood loose and uh, see if we get this thing replaced. i let y'all know, it's this is North Alabama. Uh, well, close to Gunnersville, we'll just say that. And as we speak, it's 13 degrees. That's an even wind chill. That's 13. We got it's solid ice here, but up towards the Huntsville area and uh, Hazel Green, you know, they got like six inches and Oh, but up in Knoxville got, uh, I think, 11 inches, so crazy amounts. So let me get suited up and get uh, get on this monkey. It is freezing cold out here. Hmm. This thing is pretty well frozen up. So, I've done some cleaning on the outside, but, you know, I already broke one of my ice scrapers today on my car. So, uh, we'll let that boil for a minute. That's all I got. She's been running a while. This puppy does. It's got really aggressive tires on it. Really aggressive. Y'all notice in videos. Uh, so I want to look at, and it will hook right after. So. Like nobody's coming. Mm. You know, it does have a lot of horsepower and torque, so the track light comes on. to where we were going. Yeah. Go get some propane and get back home. Thank you. 
Yeah, as you can tell, I made a makeshift rig here. Uh, I teed off the uh, the VTEC module here, and there's going to be there's a pressure switch for the VTEC. Don't I? Yes, I made threads and uh, an old pressure gauge. And what I'm going to do here is uh, uh, let's, let's let's we'll go over this right now. A lot of guys on the internet got this stuff wrong on how it works. Yeah, simple deductive reason to replace parts, fix the problem. Okay, good deal. But guess what? Brand new parts did not fix my problem. So I have to determine what the problem is and go from there. That's the reason why I made this here. This line come off a of Kung Pao chicken um, uh, brake assembly, rear brake assembly, uh, some Chinese knockoff Honda, and it fit perfectly. Even the uh, the banjo, the banjo uh, bolt there, the banjo, everything fit fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. So moving on up here, I just rest of this stuff come from uh, either or oh, this came from O'Reilly's. It's just a uh, twenty dollars, and I just didn't have one. It worked for some stupid reason. I went in and bought a new gauge. It's in route, but I'm not going to use it on this one. And T and all this come from from Lowe's. So how how this system is supposed to work? And this is where some people got it wrong. Maybe they were talking about different VTEC designs, but they were showing pictures of an 07 Odyssey and the uh, flow path for the Actus control valve here. How it works is, key off. Uh, this valve is open 100%, and it's flowing from the oil pump to this one right here, and this one right here goes to the cylinder head for the uh, the middle rocker arm, the, the VTEC rocker arm. It goes to the pins. So, as you can tell, it's wide open. The flow path goes, I, I scoured the internet to find out the flow path. They'll give you a diagram, but only in one direction. A guy goes over this pretty good, but does not go over what I needed. What I needed to know was um, on and off operation for oil flow. Because the code I'm getting says when VTEC is commanded off, it's still showing oil pressure on this side. So I had to figure out a way to, uh, I had to tear this old one down, figure out the flow, energize the solenoid, figure out which ports work. So oil comes in this one right here and it goes to, once it goes, I, I figured it out. It runs to the back side of this port right here. See, it's direct, it runs to it. It is direct. So. Ba bing So that tells me right there is when the oil pump is pumping, if this valve is not moving, therefore, this port right here is pressurized. The pressure transducer goes in right here. I should say pressure switch goes in right here. There's a tiny hole inside there. I uh, blew carburetor cleaner in there to make sure it came out right there. So the it's telling me I still have pressure right there. So, you know, that could be the valve, the actual solenoid. It could be the spool valve hanging up, which it's not. And this valve works when you energize it. Oil pressure is on this side. It comes out this little side when you blow through it when it's energized. And then it pressurizes the back side of this port right here, which pushes this valve closed. Okay, I said that kind of prematurely, and I'm sorry. So let's turn the key on now. The key on. Uh, and it's running at an idle, it energizes this. So when it energizes this, it puts pressure right here and closes it off. When VTEC is command, therefore, uh, this should show no pressure, basically, no pressure. So that should be a solid five volts. If the if all the diagrams and with explanations right, this should show five volts with no pressure right here. So it's putting the five volt reference on the, uh, excuse me, the five volt uh, supply on the reference going back to the PCM. And there's three wires. There's a ground, there's five volts, and there's a return. So <clears throat> that being said, when I energize, I mean, when I de-energize this right here, when VTEC happens, when I de-energize that, it moves this spool valve back this direction because it takes the pressure off the back of this uh, piston over here and therefore allows all the, all the oil pressure to basically go to the uh, the uh, VTEC rocker arms. 
and it should show pressure on that port and pressure is supposed to be zero volts or close to it. So either way, the reason why I set up this rig is when I get it together, no codes, and it gets warm, I'm going to test it. I'm going to, I'm going to see what my oil pressure is on this gauge right here. I'm going to back probe this sensor here, the one that's going back, the uh, wire going back to the computer, uh, and then ground it, figure out uh, what the voltage is for that, and then go ahead and unplug this. Therefore, this should go low when pressure goes high. This should go low. Excuse me. The voltage should go low on the uh, sensor while the pressure goes high and command the uh, system to uh, go into limp mode and lights come on on the dash. Okay, if that works, that's good, that's fine. But what I'm wanting to see is when it does immediately happen, I want to know what voltage is on this sensor. I'm gonna back probe this here to make sure that's commanded properly and check pressure at the same time. Now when I get this telemetry when it happens, then we can go further on what we need to look at. I don't know yet. I need to see what I'm getting. I know it causes the problem. I know it sets the code off. So I need to see it in action because I started thinking, well, what if, what if the oil pressure is not returning properly in the uh, cylinder heads in the uh, VTEC assembly? Because a lot of people have, I know there's a lot of talking in this one, but you gotta, gotta bear with me here. I've done a lot of research. I went through a lot of blogs, people taking their stuff to dealership. Uh, dealerships charging two grand to put, you know, uh, oil pumps and stuff in. But think about it. This 2647 can't be an oil supply problem because it's too high. It's, it's rendering too high, so it can't be that. Maybe the opposite of the, 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 the 46, possibly that could be, but not a 47 because it's saying it's too high when it's not supposed to be, not too low. So it is, uh, if you can hear the click, click, click outside, it's starting to rain after all this ice is done up and gone. It's cold, and I'm not going to hook this thing up tonight. So uh, I'll hook it up tomorrow night and uh, get it going, and we'll take a test drive and see what this thing does because it'll set it within five miles. It, it has not failed to not, it has not failed me yet to fail. So, I'll get you around when I get that done. Okay, we're doing a little testing this morning. As you can tell, we got the tea in there. Don't let the tape fool you on the connection I made. It's actually double reinforced, bailing wire and all kind of stuff in there. And I put a picture somewhere in the corner of, before I put tape on it, so y'all don't worry. Now, we're sitting there up to temperature. I'm idling. No lights on on the dash. I just cleared them. Now, before I drive this thing, I'm going to induce a code. Don't let the... If theories are correct, as you can tell, there's no oil pressure because that's the VTEC side. If I disconnect the solenoid, sorry if I disconnect the solenoid, that pressure should come up. If it doesn't, let's watch it. Solenoid is disconnected. And that's supposed to be taking power off the solenoid. I think this warrants a little explanation. First of all, as you can tell, check engine lights on. We're not getting any voltages to the solenoid. And we're at uh, pretty much zero oil pressure. So, if all is true, I have an actual oil pressure problem. So, we're gonna go ahead and restart. All right, I'm gonna put it in drive. Now, that's the voltage. So let's uh, give this thing a ride. Oil pressure's coming up. Because there's no voltage applied.
trying to keep the oil pressure up. I'm sure y'all know why. I'm actually going to do an oil pressure test on this too and change the oil immediately when I get home. So, uh, let's get on out there. If I can not hit this blazer. So, oil pressure up there. I'm sorry for the video. I'm, I'm not really good at all this at once. Especially when I'm trying to be safe. But, uh, I'll explain a little more on, uh, throttle response versus econo mode slash when that solenoid works are supposed to engage VTEC because it is kind of weird up see just it tried to uh, uh, let me see if I can get a longer run here without the Sun right now we're sitting at about 25 30 psi we're at 20 millivolts so let's get it on up and I got it manual third to keep the rpms up for all pressure reasons so let's go ahead and uh, let off a little bit see it's going to 13 volts and it slams down to zero out there. It's exactly opposite of what people are saying how it works on the internet for the Odyssey. Maybe the other designs are different, but this, they were saying this is how the Odyssey works. I had to go to the dealer manual on this, just some excerpts they had in there and uh, deliberate how I wanted to test this. So my theories were right based on that, different from what people say it works, but all right, we're at 11 millivolts, so it should not be on. It went into limp mode just immediately. Zero oil pressure, as indicated. So uh, let's shut this puppy off, and we're going to change the oil. And I'm going to hook up the uh, uh, oil pressure gauge down on the oil pressure sending unit, so uh, I can keep an eye on that, too. Get you back around here in a minute. Well, I'm back. Back to church and all that. Uh, I'm going to cut this oil filter open. If I wasn't clear on all the testing and stuff, because I've had to hit and miss back and forth, all that, so there might have been some, and I missed some video that I forgot to hit the record button. So, but what I have found was idle oil pressure was too low. It was around indicated zero on a mechanical gauge, but I don't know what it showed back at the PCM. It wasn't enough to set off the uh, oil light. It was not enough to set off the, uh, there's a code I believe on those that deal with low oil pressure. We never had those issues, just the VTEC. So, oil pressure was too low, which is counterintuitive, I'm gonna say counterintuitive, because the code that was set, it said that the rocker arm was stuck on that meant that it had high oil pressure on the discharge side of the VTEC spool, which was kind of weird because how can that be if the oil pressure is too low? That's why I made the gauge assembly and all that that I wasn't dismissing what the PCM was telling me, but I needed to see it actively work. I needed to see everything that was involved, which led me to low oil pressure. So. I've read on some forums that uh, some people had to have uh, on their 07 Odysseys had to have oil pumps put in, which is reverse thinking if the code is at uh, 2647, which is high discharge pressure. Weird. But anyway, we've drove over 50 miles and went to church, two test drives. The thing's spot on. And my idle oil pressure indicated at the VTEC on the discharge side and I'll get to that in a minute when I said VTEC oil pressure at an idle was about it showed 50, a little scratch more than 15 on this gauge and like I said I never even put an oil pressure gauge on it because I wasn't having any indication the engine's quiet as a mouse so I, I next oil change which I did an oil change that's the reason why this is here I, I'm going to check oil pressure on it. So, but the answer lies right here because oil pressure is fine. The, after, I believe I said before, after talking with the uh, owner before me, which is pretty much almost the original uh, owner, uh, A, they never had this problem and didn't have it until I had it. And then we found out after more talking that it sat for basically six months. 
So that prompted me, A, change oil, B, I run 5W20 in it. I need to find out what it takes, but in my other VTEC, I run 10W30 in the winter and I run 10W40 in the summer. It is not BBT, it's nothing like that, so it, it's good old fashioned oil pressure. I wouldn't worry about, you know, active cylinder management, MDS, MSD, you know, LSD, whatever they got on these vehicles nowadays. The more retarded stuff you don't need. But anyway, let's cut this thing open, let's take a look. I am super curious. Had to buy me a new one because I still haven't found my old one. Start to cut through, make sure how you go slow and have your bucket. I know I've cut many of them on race cars and engines and lottie lottie. It's just not the element. We want to look in here too. I mean, I'm cleaning my mess and we'll get it all up on the workbench. Most shops are not really super particular about when they move. Floor, but this leads me into the house, so uh, I got to. There's trash all in this thing. I didn't cut it open, so we're about to unveil. But I'm trying to cut up my mask because it's, it gets a little everywhere. So there was trash in there? I haven't fully cut open the pleats yet. I'm getting there. Particularly when we get on the floor over here because this gets tracked in, I can't have that. So it's got cats that pee on everything going up there. Take a look. There's no metal, but there is tons of just dirt, debris. You can see it all around the outside right there. And holy smokes. Let me cut this. I might even need to cut it open. Just Give me a minute, let me cut that open. Crash in there. Oh my goodness. And look 
in the bottom of that, collect it on the bottom. Wow. So, yep. See, in the race motor, you're not looking for trash. You get all the trash. You're looking for metal in the race motor. But engines out in service for daily drivers, you're looking for trash and metal. So, yeah, as you can tell, all the trash in there is just pretty, pretty bad. So let me cut this thing open and uh, we'll look at those pleats. So that makes me feel good. This was the answer. Look at that. Look at all this trash, guys. Oh, my gosh. I ain't got to cut it open. And you can see it all just packed in there. Just intense amount of trash. Wow. I ain't going to cut that open. Wow. So, guys, that was a problem. Now, you think, of, well, how did that trash get in there? Well, I can answer that. We're going to keep that oil changed. Uh, uh, I'll probably change it about every, for the first six months, I'll probably change it about every thousand miles. Um, make sure we get this out because it sat for a while and it just it's called mechanical chemical shock two things and temperature it sits for a while and you got trash and I can guarantee you this was not changed and this isn't on the owner's fault because they take it to that dealership to change the oil I'm sorry but anyway when you run a situation like that what happens if the engine sits for a while and you got, you know, deposits, uh, the rapid heat up and cool down will break stuff loose along with mechanical agitation from the engine harmonics, vibrations, driving it. Uh, oil pressure problems happen generally right after that on revivals. Uh, a lot of people can say yes and no to that, but that's what I have seen. Uh, and uh, also, another thing I did, I don't know what oil they put in it, but I'm sure it was a detergent base. But off camera, I had mentioned before, after I got done with the uh, brake problem, uh, I noticed it was a quart low, and I stuck uh, some uh, 10W30 high detergent in it. And that could have helped knock a few things loose. But anyway, there's my answer. That's, I'm very comfortable with the outcome, even though I know I got trash in the engine. I can take care of that. So this is wonderful, wonderful news. So now to go back... I'm going to go back and do my homework on exactly what the codes were, exactly what I have, and I'm going to draw a picture and tell, show you all exactly what I did. So bear with me. Let me get all that out of my and get my old whiteboard out. So if I can find some dry erase markers. Okay, guys, I'm sorry I couldn't find a whiteboard here. Well, couldn't find the markers. But anyway, I'll show you how this stuff works. Now, this is a 2007 Odyssey. I can't tell you about it other than the VTEX because some sites say it energizes the solenoid for the VTEC to operate. That's not how this one works. We have oil pressure that comes in right here uh, and it goes to the spool valve. The spool valve itself is normally open, which is engaging the VTEC. And there's a pressure switch. Okay. Oil pressure is also right here at this valve, which is normally closed. So when the VTEC is energized, it goes against spring pressure and allows oil pressure to go here, which opens, which closes the oil pump supply and discharges. So to energize, when you energize the solenoid, it turns off. So if the video, and you notice in that, when it goes to 12 volts plus on the meter I have on the dash, when it does that, oil pressure rockets down on this pressure switch. Now, let's take a look at the code that was set many, many, many times. 2647. A, which is, a, there's only, there's only, it's only on one bank. Uh, a, rocker arm actuator system stuck on. Now, stuck on. Here's my question to Honda. Is that a holistic approach or this switch or is it the solenoid because what was happening is y'all saw the uh, the oil change fixed the problem because the oil filter had been changed many 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 miles so what was happening it would set it when 
the uh, pressure solenoid, I mean the solenoid itself was de-energized, which is allowing full, full oil flow going to the VTEC, it would set it off when it was de-energized and pressure got near zero, as indicated from the, I put a, the, uh, this sensor right here, I made a T that went to one, went to the gauge I had up on the dash and then one in to the pressure switch. Okay, and I don't care how that reads it at this point. What I noticed was that was turned off, it was signaled off, and I had no pressure here. That's what set the light off. So if that's the case, how can it say stuck on holistically if it was saying low pressure as indicated from this switch and indicated from the gauge? So if I'm getting all this wrong, somebody please correct me. I have no problem. I don't know everything, and I don't mind being schooled. I just need to know why. At this point, it doesn't matter. The problem is fixed. It's just it's going to chew up one of the uh, vCPUs in my brain until the day I die unless somebody interjects and tells me, you know, why I did this. So if you go to the Honda, this is from the Honda manual. This is putting the T in there, just like I did. Blah, 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 blah. And anyway, it says right here, it says start the engine, let it run at 3,000 RPM for until the fans kick on. That tells you it's an NOT, normal operating temperature. And that generally tells you that you know, oil pressure is going to be close to the lowest it's going to be. That's what NOT stands for. So, but it says check the pressure. Let it run for two minutes at idle. Check the pressure. Was the pressure high? If it was, yes. If it was at 59.6, if it did increase to that, replace the uh, sensor. Okay, cool beans. But if it's low, replace the solenoid. Hmm, okay, if it's low. Well, we already disproved this because it wasn't that. This is this is where full, uh, uh, more detailed testing uh, proved is wrong. Uh, as in, it's not wrong, it's just that, that you'd just be changing out a part or a module and it not fixed your problem because the problem is oil pressure based. But if it says no, that tells me it's supposed to be high at an idle, which goes back to, to be high at an idle, solenoid has to be de-energized. Okay, this is my thought process and how it worked and how I determine what this problem is. Now, on my 05 Pilot, it's a different animal when it comes to this. Uh, it's in a different spot and all that, but what I'm getting at is the fact that all said and done, you just drive it normally and all, you know, the engine is not running under VTEC. But boy, you hit that 2500 and you're wide open, you can hear the intake change. I mean, it, it goes wee, so you know you got more lift duration and it sounds like a little more reversion on the intake. It's more aggressive and it hits, it hits hard. This system here on the 07 Odyssey here is very smooth, okay? It doesn't do that. It, it, it's it's just a smooth power progression. So that also made me think, well, how, what's the difference between the two? Well, if you're cruising down the road, normal operating temperature and all that, and uh, your solenoid is de-energized. Now you're sitting at part throttle for a little longer and it goes into eco mode. Give it a few seconds, you'll see that uh, solenoid energize. And then that's when you should see this pressure start rocketing off because you're closing that valve and you're sending your VTEC oil pressure back to your drain. Uh, and it's real mod it modulates it somewhat. And it's, it's pretty smooth acting, so I I'm glad because it's a little less violent. And my wife don't hear me getting in the throttle so quick, so hard. So, but I hope this helps on this. Uh, other systems, the way they're talking about is when it energizes that, then it's allowing, uh, it's turning off the oil flow to this, therefore um, allowing oil pressure. So like these are reversed here and that's reversed. So either way it'll work. It's just that if you look this up, it doesn't show that for the Odyssey under the looking on the internet. I actually, that's why I had to really dig, 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 get this stuff from Honda and it, it proved my theory. So, hope it helps. It helped me. Due to time constraints and temperature, that was well below what 
I call enough for a human. I mean, it was, you know, one, two, three degrees of wind chill and trying to get out and work because this is your family ride is beat me down a lot trying to get this thing going because I had to get it going. So we put a lot of other projects on standby because as soon as I got a part in or I got time, poof, I was on this here. So I do believe we have the VTEC fixed. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna stay on top of the uh, oil chain, change it really regular to get some of that trash out of the engine. And uh, I guess Nook's oil change, I'll let it drain for a good bit and I go ahead and stick the, uh, the, uh, the bore scope uh, up the drain hole and uh, see if I can see anything on the strainer. That's the case, I'll go ahead and drop the pan and go ahead and clean it also. Uh, but nothing come out during the oil change. It was, it, it was, there was no debris. So I guess uh, the oil filter got it all. So uh, I hope this video does help somebody, uh, especially with the Odysseys. Um, I'm not gonna say yours is not an oil pump related issue or a bearing related issue, but it can be oil pressure starvation is the issue. Even spoke, even said it was stuck on. So counterintuitive, whatever you want to call it, but it doesn't just, it doesn't, it doesn't sit right in my brain. So, but either way, uh, please like, subscribe. Hope you did like this one, and uh, God bless.